Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. It's the kickoff of another live worldwide broadcast. It is Wednesday, the seventh day of December 2011. It is the 70th anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack by the Imperial Japanese. But we do have historian Webster Griffin Tarbley joining us. He's got a book coming out. It's not out yet uh, on what really happened at Pearl Harbor. It's a great example of a provocateur action. It's not saying the Imperial Japanese were good. It's just that the U.S. proxy forces were attacking them in China, the Flying Tigers, mercenaries. The oil was cut off to Japan, and then the purple and blue code had been broken months before, and the United States did know the attack was coming. The Honolulu Advertiser, and I have a copy of it, an actual copy from the archives, did report a week before that the attack would come on the morning of December 7th. Honolulu Advertiser, still in operation today. And then they set up the generals and admirals and blamed them for it. When uh, the aircraft carriers were put out to safe area, the old battleships allowed to be attacked. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. This is in my film, Masters of Terror, the CNN article. Five Japanese midget subs were attacked in the process of trying to get there and launch attacks that morning in and around Pearl Harbor. So, so the military was ordered to stand down while submarines had already been engaged because one hand didn't know what the other hand was doing, in one case, 20 miles away from Pearl Harbor. And by the way, this has always been hidden in plain view. Whenever I went and um, years ago, but but now it's giant. Now, now it's much bigger than it had been. Before it was just Admiral Nimitz's boyhood home in Fredericksburg, Texas, a, a, a hotel his family owned that was shaped like a ship, with the prow of a ship and a, and a conning tower, uh, that that was a Pacific War Museum. Then when it became the official National Pacific War Museum, the George H.W. Bush Museum, uh, they built a huge complex, and it's a very world-class museum, by the way. I, I suggest you go there. They've got actual decommissioned, unarmed uh, fat boys and little boy uh, A-bombs. They, I mean, they've got it all there. But hiding in plain view is one of the midget subs from Pearl Harbor attack. <laughs> so that was always hidden in plain view right there. And they paraded the sub around the country uh, as well. And it was hidden in plain view in the original news articles. You can read that, that that they sunk it like an hour before the attack began. And still the stand down order happened. The Japanese are intercepted, attacked, and counterattacked, trying to get their attack into the Pearl Harbor with subs, basically suicide teams, on midget subs, pocket subs, are, I'm now digressing because this is 70 years ago, and it doesn't take away from the valor of our troops. It just shows how Imperial Japanese evil, U.S. government evil, Churchill evil, and then you get into that whole lesser of evils uh, discussion. But it just shows the manipulation. Now, when they couldn't get the North Vietnamese to attack, in 64, uh, and they wanted to go ahead and kick off the official war that had just been advisors for four years. They said our destroyers were attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin. And then, of course, we were conspiracy theorists for decades talking about it until they declassified it on the 40th anniversary in 2004 and admitted it was all staged and a lie. Of course, sailors had come back and said it was a fraud. It had been in the San Diego Herald Tribune. It was a fraud when this first officer came out and said it was a fraud. But then that just became a rumor. People read the news, told people, but years later, well, I don't know where I heard it, but it, yeah, they say that was staged. That rumor, that legend came from the admissions. Okay. Now, I digress here, but but it is interesting that after Pearl Harbor, close to 100,000 Japanese who love the free market freedom of America and become wealthy on the West Coast, some of them over here over 100 years, owning shipping companies, fishing companies, restaurants, factories, warehouses from Seattle down to San Diego. But San Francisco was the big one. They owned farms. They owned grape vineyards. Their land was taken, and they were put into forced labor camps all over the West Coast. 
And they have come, I mean, that'd be like if we had a war with Mexico, arrest anybody who's got a Spanish surname. Or if we ever had a war with England, you know, my name's Jones, are you going to arrest me? If we had a war with Italy, it, you know, if your name is uh, Monty, do you get arrested? Or if your name is, uh, do you arrest somebody because their last name's Capone? Because somebody named Capone did something wrong once? I, I mean, it, it's this idea of a black person commits a crime, so all black people are criminals, basically. Now, the reason I raise that is this news I've got for you is so big that I'm not even going to cover it right now. It is so big that I am not even going to get into it until we start the next segment. And I want to ask all of you to call your friends, to call your family, to call your neighbors, to tell the person next to you if you're on your lunch break in the Eastern time zone, sitting there eating your lunch, listening to the audio streams of Infowars.com, of this radio show, or if you're watching us on PrisonPlanet.tv on your lunch break or whatever the case is, or if you're driving along in your squad car or if you're driving along in your taxi listening, uh, or if you're out on a ship, people listen on cruise ships. I've gotten phone calls from cruise ships or uh, fishing ships. Wherever you are in the world, or ships at sea. I want you to tell the person next to you or to email your friends, tell your Facebook friends. If anybody still uses Facebook? <laughs> kind of like uh, MySpace. No, they, they do. I'm joking. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, to tell everybody to tune in right now. In fact, I should put a Twitter out right now on my own, Real Alex Jones at Twitter. Uh, and, and, and to be able to tune in, you know, driving into work this morning, I was thinking, how do I properly address something this big? How do I give people all the points of the compass? How do I explain the serious magnitude of this and the fact that it is real and it is happening and only by exposing it can we back them off? And then, of course, when it doesn't happen, we'll be blamed down the road. Oh, look, it didn't happen. And then, of course, we I remember five years ago, we said they're on the verge of attacking Iran. They want to paint up speedboats like Iranian boats and stage attacks on the ships. That's what our CIA sources are saying. Came out two years later that, indeed, Cheney had begun to paint up the boats and had told the Navy SEALs to do it, but that higher-ups, even above him, George Walker Bush had told him no. And then they didn't get that attack launched, and so, oh, look, the attack never happened. You know, you know, that's the point is that now the attacks are going on, as we told you years ago, but now it's admitted, blowing up bases, assassinating, killing people, drones dropping bombs, huge bases being vaporized with, with what's clearly gigantic uh, bombs, huge craters, and our media is like, oh, it's just some ammunition blew up. <laughs> and then now they're like, okay, we're blowing stuff up in Iran. I mean, it's on. The war is already on. It's like I asked... Um, I imagine yesterday I said, when's the war going to kick off? And he goes, it's already going on. That's why the Iranians are now threatening to go ahead and block the Strait of Hormuz. They are now they don't like to look weak at the fact that they're taking attacks. So now they're kind of tacitly admitting it as well. And uh, saying they may go ahead and block the Strait of Hormuz. So it'll basically double oil prices. All of this stuff is getting crazy. Uh, you've got the Russians there in the Mediterranean delivering 76 hypersonic, super high tech, giant cruise missiles, surface-to-ship, anti-ship weapons. Uh, you've got U.S. fleets that are missile cruisers that are carrying nukes building up all over the Gulf and all over the Med, the Mediterranean. You've got the Pakistanis blocking the U.S. route into Afghanistan, the main supply route. The Russians blocking the other route. The Pakistanis saying, get out of these military bases. The U.S. is starting to comply. The Russians are deploying weapons all over their borders. Uh, it is now confirmed that the Soros crowd has been trying to destabilize and have hack attacks and things in Russia during that election. And again, it's not that Putin and Medvedev are good either. It's different groups of mafias and global gangster systems. It's just that we're run by the most powerful mafia, the big mega banks, who are waging war against the free market, the Second Amendment, the family. The whole homeland security grid is for us. 
They finance the Muslim extremists. They finance Al Qaeda. They protect them along with Saudi Arabia. And, and, and now it's all admitted. Underwear bomber, U.S. government got him on the plane. Shoe bomber got him on the plane. Major Hassan protected, run by Alaki, the known CIA operative who they staged his uh, killing, totally phony. Uh, Al Qaeda given Libya, Al Qaeda sent into Syria, Al Qaeda used against the Serbs, Al Qaeda used against the Russians. It's all basically admitted now. And for anybody that even tries to study this, it's just all right there. More than you could ever even learn is there. Hidden in absolute and total plain view. And I tell you, I have uh, I have been so busy working on all this information that it's just overwhelming. And, and everything's coming to a head. Everything's accelerating. Everything's building up to a quickening right now. Now, we're going to go to break. When we come back, I'm going to cover the two top stories at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com that I need all of you, like never before, to get out to your whole email list and everyone you know and to all the big news sites and all the radio shows because we've got to force this out into being a national story, and we've got to do it right now. Here are the headlines. We'll cover it when we come back. Detention camp. Order follows preparation for civil unrest. KBR seeks subcontractors to outfit emergency environment centers. They've already built the camps. Now they're trying to man them. Do you know what that means? Here's another headline, Infowars.com. Exclusive government activating FEMA camps across the United States. Kurt Nemo and Alex Jones. We'll be right back breaking this down.